Hello, I'm Rosalie and welcome to Bible Reflections on this second Sunday in Lent. This week we're considering Luke chapter 13 and particularly verses 22 to 25. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, Jesus says. So we're reflecting on what our faith means. How can we change our lives to come more into what God wants for them? We're looking at three episodes in Luke chapter 13. And firstly, a group of people came to Jesus and wanted to know if the popular belief that if a calamity happens to somebody, it's because they are particularly wicked. And Jesus gives the example of the Tower of Siloam falling on people. He says, no, it doesn't mean that. The people had been talking about the Galileans who'd been struck down by the Romans while they were making their sacrifices in the temple. This was a particularly bad ending to their lives. Not only were they killed, but they were killed in a horrific way within the holy situation of a temple, making a pious act, sacrificing to God. And of course, 18 people have died in that Siloam tower collapsing. Two examples of catastrophes, bad things happening to good people. But Jesus said, no, bad things can happen to good people as well. But what he points to, he said, you must repent. And the example he was given about the fig tree points to him meaning the Jewish nation. You must repent, otherwise you too will perish. That's verse 9. The fig tree has got to be cut down because it isn't fit for purpose. It isn't producing fruit. And as I've said, it represented the nation of Israel to the people listening at that time. It's a warning for society, but we are individuals. Is there anything we can do? Yes, we can pray for our government. We can pray for our local leaders, for our families, our schools, our churches. On a personal level too, I want to refer back to the text. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door. It points to a time for individual reflection. We must look at our individual standards of integrity, honesty, sincerity, of our work ethic. And do we have healthy bodies and healthy minds? It is a time to reflect, to fine tune our standards with God's. We can do this by asking him in prayer. One area I know a lot of Christians um, struggle with is that of debt. Now, my husband and I said, we never had any debt because if we didn't have the money for something, we didn't buy it. I know times are different People are sucked into not percentage interest and easy credit cards. And before they know where they are, they've been sucked into that black hole. If that's you, get help. Your church leader can help you. And there's lots of um, organizations, Ch Christians Against Poverty is one, that can help. Don't leave it. The second story in Luke chapter 13 is of a crippled woman whom Jesus healed, but he did it on the Sabbath day. He disregarded the rules which the authorities laid down. Of course, the Pharisees were furious. Jesus didn't keep to their rules. So secondly, we need to weigh up what our rulers are doing in society and what they're doing themselves as well as what we are doing. We need to pray about it so we get God's perspective on the situation. 
we may have to throw away some of our own cultural and institutional beliefs. Thirdly, Jesus tells two mini parables, one about the mustard seed and secondly about the yeast in the dough. And he's answering his own questions. What is the kingdom of God like? Well, they tell us it starts small, but then it begins to flourish. Now I'm going to read for you Luke chapter 13, verses 22 to 25. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know where you are or where you've come from. And he will say, they will say, We ate and drank with you and you taught us in the streets. But he will reply, I do not know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. So that's a stark reminder to us. Go to the narrow door. The narrow door is the one which is the hardest entering to enter. In a way, Jesus is saying what I've been saying and what he says again in Matthew chapter 5, verse 15, verse 13, sorry. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? Christians are the flavouring in society. At this time, many of us have experienced COVID-19. And you all know, you lose your sense of smell and your sense of taste. It's just awful, isn't it? Lent is a time when we can, can look and reflect and get our flavouring back, our Christian flavouring, where we in our homes, in our workplace and in our churches. So, three things I've given you to consider today. Firstly, what are your standards of behaviour? Secondly, how much does society influence you? And thirdly, to make small changes this Lent. Now we're on to the poem. It's called Jigsaw Puzzle. Little by little, the jigsaw enlarges as each piece takes its place. Little by little, Jesus emerges. We see pictures of God's grace. We always start the corners to give us a total view. I wonder which piece of the jigsaw Jesus has made you? If ever there's a piece missing, we hear such a hue and cry. Are you missing from God's jigsaw? If you are, ask yourself why? You may think you're unimportant, but let me assure you of this. All of the other pieces tell Jesus it's you that they miss. They cry so long to the Father, for his grace is sufficient for you. It's marked out a long life's journey, if only you could find the clue. It's all in God's word, the Bible. You'll find it if you look, but remember to pray for forgiveness as you open that holy book. As you come to the Lord, come weeping. Tears of repentance he understands. He'll be there to pick up the pieces. Hold on to his outstretched hand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus. And we ask you as we consider further in Lent to help us think about our individual standards 
of honesty, integrity. Help us to think about how we deal with other people in the family, in the church, in our work in society. Lord, help us to pray for our leaders and to tell a timely word if it's, if it's needed and help us to go small paces, Lord, because we know that the small pieces of change can make a huge difference. We pray especially this week, Lord, for the people of Ukraine, that you will be with them and you will help them. We ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. So there it is for another week. May God bless you this week. And if you can, please subscribe or make a comment just to encourage me and to help me to improve this service for you. But thank you for watching. Go in God's grace. Amen.